Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart of Sun, I'm black in again asking you to hit that share button. Thank you if you've hit like or subscribe, but share is the one that benefits us and the message is more important than the messenger. This message is a prediction. But when I predict what will happen to the nation and to the West in general, post MGTOW, post IBMOR, and post SISBIM, SYSBM, I don't predict as a prophet because there are no more prophets coming again, no more messengers coming again, in case people want to get technical about it. Until Jesus comes back, peace be to him, ain't no prophets walking the earth again, and he will not come with a revelation of a new way of life himself when he does return. I'm predicting as a man who simply uses history to understand the present and using the history and the present together to understand the future. For white folks, I imagine that uh, many don't know about MGTOW, but more learning. And many of their young women don't care because they don't feel its effects until they hit the wall and they can't find the same guys to commit they previously planned to sleep with them. Because they have the idea that they're entitled to ride the penises um, all of the women want, they pass around the same few men between them, which ironically is also reported to happen in Japan nowadays. Some guys are getting more than ever when it comes to the women's walls. Other guys uh, are just by themselves completely. And I suspect it will become more like this in the West anyway. Uh, and the women won't even realize what's going on while they're young. The young women will find what they want as long as they're willing to share it, knowingly or unknowingly. And many are, but they also feel entitled to put the other men on weight until they want some commitment and the fund for their lifestyle above poverty. Now, this means that it's only when they hit the wall that they feel this loss. In the U.S., maybe the West overall, what is likely in the future is that the young women will hear about MGTOW, but they will deride and dismiss it while they're young. They'll underestimate it. And I'm talking about the white community now. When they hit the wall or just look for commitment from a different type of man, they will then know its effects firsthand as they can't find what they thought they had stashed away by denial. They begin thinking that by denying normal men the vagina when they're young, they will have these men thirsty and waiting later on when they want a commitment. They'll realize that it isn't so. Not only this, but as more and more younger men do, um, uh, as more and more younger men that they do want see how it goes, the women will see some of these men while they're young they won't even give them the time of day and they'll start off calling such men gay right off the bat dismissing them and as more of them get older or just get ugly or have kids out of wedlock or gain weight or accumulate baggage in the form of debt or emotional baggage and simply um, become less of a catch um, they will still remain demanding and they will push for laws like the one in France that do not allow men to have paternity tests to ascertain that they are the fathers of the babies they're raising by force. I cannot predict if these laws will pass or not, but they will be debated. They will push even for men to be castrated, already based on heinous sex crimes, but later on based on things like making approaches while not being attractive enough. Simply asking women out will not only be a crime, but possibly a crime punishable by castration if these women voters get their way. Again, I'm talking about the white community. The women calling for this won't even call themselves feminists in many cases. I'm sure it will become a crime to ask a woman out. However, I cannot predict if it will be a misdemeanor or a felony, and it may change uh, state by state. And if it will be punished by castration or not, I can't guarantee. But I can guarantee that a camp of women will request that it be punished by castration. And this will be called for because of women feeling that men don't deserve orgasms anyway, especially normal men who don't appeal to these women. The government and businesses, however, will know the extent of MGTOW before the women themselves do because this is already happening. Already bridal shops are seeing a dip in business, wedding planners are less busy, and jewelers are seeing either a shift in demand or a drop in demand. Always less of a demand for the jewelry that centers around uh, engagements and marriages. Sometimes this will mean a dip in overall demand as it's already happened. Industries that center on men having to impress women, um, they're going to shrink because they already started. So bars, if no bars have already closed, some of them will close. Nightclubs even more so. Fewer men will be in these establishments looking for women, so they're going to be buying them fewer drinks. Clubs will have only the men 
that have nothing to offer in them looking for women because the men who have something to offer also have something to lose and they're aware of this as what we're already seeing and they will see women as predators hunting not for husbands but for ex-husbands <laughs> alimony laws if they get their way will be changed now if the laws don't change there will still be a push for these laws to change how so we're pushing for laws uh, like alimony divorce and custody laws to be more equitable we as men but many of the women are going to push for the alimony laws to be changed to allow ex-wives to collect from multiple ex-husbands see right now in many states when an ex-wife remarries the ex-husband can't he's not uh, no longer liable for alimony they'll change that so that the first ex the second ex and the third ex will be liable for alimony unless their campaigns to get these laws changed are not successful but i can't see why they would fail though see as a woman um who doesn't want to work for a living uh she has every reason to make sure that women voters increase not just politicians but women voters and she will understand that false accusations against men means that those men will be disenfranchised as voters so not only will women outnumber men maybe women voters outnumber men but they can further decrease the number of males who can vote by false accusations when they're young and when women will be actually willing to falsely accuse men at, at a grander scale sometimes even their own relatives in the subconscious and conscious effort to make male voters a smaller minority there's nothing to stop them at this point they will do to white men what we know they did to black men already they will do it because they can and because there will be enough unknowing white men to side with them not realizing that they will also be the next victims as for black america and the black west black women already hear about the scarcity of black men even while they rack up high body counts because they share the same men between them uh, and these few men are still enough for an individual woman to rack up triple digits so you got these women with these these high body counts and they already outnumber men so how are they getting high body counts and men aren't getting these high body counts well you just got a few men that are that, that all these women have been with they're imitating white women in many ways already so this makes my job of predicting easier to explain to you However, just as white women know about MGTOW uh, to a certain extent and they're against their own men getting passports and leaving for nicer women, um, black women have already shown that they're against it. But there's something different in our dynamic. See, black women are against it in general, but in the end, black Western women will be less venomous until we start telling younger men in their families why we're leaving. The black men who support them, though, the Mandingos are already showing that they're more virulent than their lady bosses. Whatever black Western women do, like try to emasculate a man, even if it's their own son, and falsely accuse a man of either homosexuality or pedophilia or any sexual deviance, these Mandingos will do even more severely. They will outbitch the bitch. So when Sapphire says, you're gay like Strange did in Boomerang, she will raise her voice and make a scene, but it will seem like it's 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 just emotional uh, outburst because that's what it will be. But the man that supports her will actually go on some Internet pages and try to connect dots that aren't connected to call you and me gay or pedophile or any kind of deviant. He'll at least come with the appearance of some research, which can be worse. So he will substantiate with pseudoscience her emotional outburst. They will say that they observed many men like you and that all of them turned out some kind of sexual oddball in the end, but never a heterosexual and not a pedophile. He'll sound more objective, even though he's lying and making up stuff or repeating something that someone else lied about or made up. And he'll assume based on individual experiences that aren't part of a pattern. He will ignore paternity fraud, but will tell black men who swear off Western black women that they're weak because they can't deal with her. Ironically, <clears throat> they'll cite pro-blackness as, as their reason for opposing um, SYSBM and IBMOR, but they will not allow you to cite pro-blackness as a reason that Western black women should change as a culture collectively or lose them in. In other words, they'll tell you it's about the families, but it's about the kids. But you can't use pro-blackness as a reason 
to tell him that black women should bring um, the babies to their own fathers, attribute the babies to their own biological fathers, place the responsibility at the feet of their own biological fathers. These men will notice that the men who leave are the ones that get mistreated by not one or two black women, but every attractive black woman, so reliably that they can predict the misbehaviors of the next one. They will not admit that it's because Western women in general are socialized to mistake kindness for weakness, and anything other than the caricature of white negative stereotypes of black men is weakness in their eyes. Now granted, there are men that are just unattractive for whatever reason, there are guys that just don't bathe. They sit down in their basements and play video games all day and they smell like Doritos um, and may even be wearing adult diapers because they can't interrupt the game to go and use the bathroom. But these guys are such an outlier themselves that they can't be the ones. I can't really sit up and talk about them because most of us would not meet them anyway. They will say that it's because you're weak. You're just like those guys. Failing to realize that the only men that Western black women view as strong are the ones who don't care what you or their supporting men do as long as they get the vagina and they're the ones who get the vagina. And I mean the, the vagina attached to attractive black Western women because they don't care about the commu community. They don't care who you screw and they don't care who these women screw when they're not with them. These guys who don't care are the ones who can screw porn stars. They have no facial expression ever except for when they're in the vagina. <laughs> That's how much they don't care. So when black men like you or I get passports, mark my words, there will be sapphires who do two things. One, they will call for passports to be restricted by the government and not issued by default upon applications. They will come as close to that as they can. It may be unrealistic, but the things that are happening today were unrealistic seven years ago, not even a full decade ago. Two, they will attempt to get black men, even their own relatives, convicted of felonies so that they won't be able to get one and ever leave the U.S., let alone the West. While they continue to get passports like they're already doing, travel, cheat on boyfriends and husbands, and export feminism to the women where they go if they can export it successfully. When these other lands have the same problem, they won't mind us going there. This is why they rarely trip if you as a black man visit Western Europe or white nations. I don't say that they never trip, but they rarely trip. But they don't trip as hard as if you went to the motherland or some tropical nation in which women don't push away men as a whole and stereotype them negatively. In the end, both races and Western women will do whatever it takes to turn their own societies into breeding and labor forms in which the men they don't want are for labor, protected by law, and the men they do want are for breeding. So in other words, they will try to encode into the society, into its institutions and laws, what they already have in the culture. Most of you are beta, not alpha, so you should work and support the rest of us. Some of you are alpha and not beta, so you and I should enjoy the fruits of their labor over there, and you and I can just get busy and screw like bunnies, and when it gets hard to raise the babies, we'll put those responsibilities on the betas. Even though the terms alpha and beta are problematic in and of themselves, that's another recording for another day. What is odd about this is that their classifications of these men aren't even based on reality, but a perception, as I've been saying, uh, because they determine if a man is alpha or not. But they don't know that alpha, as they understand it, doesn't even exist, nor does beta, not the way they get it. You see, what they see are, are men that they can't confuse for weakness, or they can't confuse as weak and men that they could conceivably confuse as weak. That's what they see. Because kindness to them is weakness, as I said. Now, in the wild, the alpha male wolf is not dominating unrelated males like what she thinks. The alpha male wolf is actually just the father raising his cubs and his mate is their mother. The scientists that studied this tried to tell people this, but they didn't listen. And here we are today discussing men in these terms as though men are just wolves and not men with multiple personalities and reactions to the same stimuli. They're going to simply pretty much, they're trying to already um, limit us to the level of beast. Most of us beast of burden and a few of us as beast of breeding. Pay attention to that. They will think that they're following an instinct because the women are limit. They're actually um, leveling themselves down 
uh, to, to beast. They think that they're following an instinct, but they will begin to fall out with each other after a while. If they succeed in getting the society encoded as a big type of labor and breeding form, they will fall out with each other after a while over where to draw the line between which men to castrate physically or figuratively and which men to leave intact so they can sleep with them. Some women will give birth to boys they think shouldn't be relegated to the labor class to pay from women to mate with other men, and they will go against the order. Now this, of course, all of these predictions I've made could merely be a fantastic prediction of an old bald-headed Muslim guy from the Gulf Coast who accidentally stumbled upon SYSBM. But there's a way we can guarantee that these predictions of mine merely remain fantastic, unrealistic predictions. Two things we'd have to do. One, we leave in large numbers as quickly as we can and as many as we can. Two, we tell the young brothers, not just even without, but especially without their mothers and aunts' permissions, why we're leaving and what role their moms and aunts and mam dingo uncles and dads played in us leaving. Let the white community go through what they're going to go through or not go. It's up to their men to determine that. I hope they go through it. <laughs> but for us, let's leave geographically as loudly as they tell us not to and quickly so we can head this off. Because believe me, these sapphires don't mind helping master the re-enslavers. I'm not talking about all Western black women. I'm talking about the loudmouth super feminist sapphires. The ones that call other women pick me's for not going after you. They don't mind helping master to re-enslave us and the sisters who won't betray us like this are going to be the first targets of the ones who can't wait to. Like I always say, I hope that one day what I say is not true anymore. In the meantime, I hope that it is a benefit. Thanks for listening. Blackheart signing Blackout. Assalamu alaikum and black male power.